right, so let's focus on the cabinet area. So if I were to go to my reference, it's this kind of whole cube, cube right here that has all the doors and uh, drawers and stuff like that in it. So you'll notice that it's um, actually a little bit offset, right? And so is the countertop here. So we want to make sure that we get all that stuff in there as well. So let's go back to getting that set up. I'm going to put a net box around this by hitting shift O. And I'm just going to call this the base wood. There we go. All right, so what do we need to do here? So we need to get the base from here. So I'm just going to copy this guy over there using alt, left click, and drag. Call this a get base. And I want to transform it so it sits on top of the base wood there. And that's pretty easy to do. We just need to get the bounding box from this guy. And we want to get the D, Y, max. All right, so we do a BB box and we want to get it from our out base wood and we want the D Y max. There we go. So now we're moved up appropriately. All right. So then uh, we need a poly extrude because we need to create the height for this. So that'll be our height right there. Do something like that. Looks pretty good. Kind of like our reference. Uh, let's go and add, start adding parameters to our control node. So we will need a new folder for this. I'm going to set it to simple. I'm going to call this the cabinet folder. And uh, for the label, we'll just use cabinet. Hit apply. And then we want to do a float in here. And this float is going to be the, this can call this the cab height. We'll call it height. The label for the range. I'll say point, actually point 0.1 will be fine. I don't think we'll ever need to go that low. And then uh, let's do, we'll do two. I'm sure you'll never really need to go that high, but you never know. And the default will be 0.5. Actually 0.6, I think it was. Let's do that. Apply and accept. All right, so let's copy this and apply it to our distance on the poly extrude node. Sweet. So now we got control over that. Cool. So now what I want to do is I need, I'm going to need to remove the front here, but I also need to first focus on um, peeking it out to get that uh, little offset right there. So that's what I'm going to focus on here now. And so to do that, I'm going to um, group this guy. So do a group. And I just want to do the group node. There we go. Oh, I went up and out there by accident. All right, so we'll do a group node, and this is going to be our front. And that is going to be selected by normals, and Z is fine, but we just want to set the spread angle to zero. So it selects that front face there, and then we can use a, a transform node to just peek that face. Yeah, there we go. Cool, so let's uh, go back to our parameter interface and create a new float for that. I'm going to call this our cab uh, front peak and we'll call it the um, front yeah, front peak will be fine. And the range will do 0 0.01 and max is probably going to be like 0 0.2. It's not really that huge. And the default is going to be uh, point, I think it was 0 0.05 is what we had in there. Apply and accept and we'll copy this guy. Yeah, 0 0.05. There we go. Cool. So now we have control over that. It's always a good idea to set up those ranges too. So it's, it makes it easier for the end user uh, to be able to use, you know, the whole width of the slider. So you might have to, you know, overpower it, but you don't want it to go from like zero to 10 because then like what's going to happen is the end user is going to have these like really tiny numbers. And it's just going to be hard uh, to use inside of um, Unreal or Unity. It's fine in, in Houdini because you can use the increment ladder by holding uh, down the middle mouse button. But you know, you want to be able to make it easier to use in the in the Houdini engine. Cool. All right. So that was 0.05. There we go. Okay. So then I'm going to do a split here. And I'm going to split off that front because, you know, when you have the, the drawers and the doors and stuff in here, um, you want to be able to see inside, 
right? So I'm going to split off the front, invert the selection, and then put down a null node down here. And I'm going to call this the cab front prim, like so. Uh, that way I can use it for developing um, our doors and drawers and stuff like that. All right, I need that reference geometry, so that's why I'm putting it in the null node. All right, so now that we got this, uh, we need to make sure that we include the bottom for, I'll put back for this guy. Very cool. And then I want to do, I want to go and grab my UV cube. So I'm going to just do an alt click and left click and drag. And we should have UVs on this guy now. Yeah. Looks pretty good. Looks like we're getting a little bit of an issue there. Something overlapping. Let's see, so it selected that one. Let's go back into here and see what the seams are like. And we'll match the size here. Let's put a null node down just so I can visualize my seams. That looks correct. That looks good too. It just looks like this guy is overlapping. Do we have two pieces of geometry up there? Let's find out. Turn on our prim nums. Nope, let's look at it in here. So zero and three are overlapping. Oh, I see why. Yeah, for this particular one, we don't need this guy right here. So that's easy enough. Let's just um, remove it. So I'm just going to select my group node here. It's using this one. You know that by the dotted line there. So I'm just going to select this and then just deselect that one. Now let's take a look at our UV layout again. Yeah, there we go. You know, it probably would have worked. We could, could have probably just added on to it, but that works just fine. Yeah. So I'll leave it at that. Cool. So now we got UVs. And now what I want to do is uh, do a poly extrude. This time we're going to... Uh, Poly extrude inward to create the the depth for this guy or the thickness for these guys here. So we're gonna go in negative like so and output our back. So now we have a solid object. There we go. And we'll reverse it. Yeah, there we go. Nice. If we look at our UVs, um, you'll notice that the poly extrude node actually creates UVs for you. Um, you can see these guys are doubled up because we have the front and the back. Uh, you can always output the groups, right? And uh, get access to those two. So you can do like a split node now and uh, split away something like the back and you get just that shell. Or if you did extrude front, you get that one. If you do both, you get just the side here. Now the side here is uh, being procedurally generated by the poly extrude node. If you actually come all the way to the bottom here, uh, you have your texture coordinates. And so you can go through and um, play around with these particular options. I usually leave it on proportional and then uh, match my 3D scale. So that gets me, you know, proper UVs for all that stuff. Cool. Very nice. And then I'm just going to poly bevel it. And really, I'm just going to copy this one. I kind of want the same bevels, so we should probably make a global. Yeah, let's do that. Let's make a global section in our parameters. So I'm going to call this first um, out uh, cabinet or out cab for short. Very cool. And then let's go into our parameter interface on our control node. And let's create a new folder called global. So this is going to be the global folder. And we'll call this global. Set it to simple. And we're just going to create a poly bubble. So I'm going to do G for global. And we'll do um, bevel amount. So say bevel amount. And what am I currently using? It's 0.002. It's super small. So let's do a range of 0.001. 
to like 0.01. I'll just clamp those out. Set this to 0.002. That's my default. Sweet. So now I have a global control for all these guys. So we can just set this up. And then we can just um, <clears throat> I'll copy that particular node so it'll always have the relative reference hooked up for us. All right, so now that we've got two pieces, let's put a netbox around this guy here. And uh, I'm going to call this uh, cabinet. Let's do an assembly. So let's get an object merge node. And we'll say assemble. All right, we can turn off the transform because we don't, we're in the, the geometry container. So the, the transform is controlling all of these guys. So we don't need to import any transform information. Uh, but we do need to start assembling all the pieces. So I'm just going to left click and drag to put in the base wood and then add another slot over here and left click and drag. And that basically starts to assemble all of our pieces together. Cool. Very nice. So I'm going to hit save and let's just put a normal down. And for now, I'm just going to set it to zero for everything just so I can see how the lighting is going to be reacting to this. Yeah, that's looking pretty cool. Always a good idea to kind of roll through all your parameters, make sure everything's still working as you step through all this stuff. That looks good. That, look, that looks looking good. And then the wood thickness down here looks pretty cool. And then the height is controlling the cabinet. Yep. Very nice. We are procedural. Let's check the bevel amount. I wonder if I can get rid of that. Might not be able to. I might want that. I'm going to leave it for now. You could always, if you do want to mess around with that, you can go into the poly bevel node here and uh, use the exclusions and say ignore flat edges and start to increase this value here. Oh, and I need to look at this one. Let's do it on uh, this other one here. I mean, it's still doing that. That's actually kind of cool. I'll leave it at that for now. Let's ch check to make sure those UVs still look good. No. Ah, we should leave it then. Oh, interesting. It's not actually affecting that guy. So we might want to... Let's see what happens when we actually UV, UV map it down here. Nope. That did not like that. So I'll have to take a look at that. It's just one little guy getting all the way, stretched all the way out there. Yep, I'll look at it a little bit later. Not a super big deal right now. All right, cool. So now we got that all set up. Uh, let's actually move on now and do the countertop. We'll get all these major pieces in before we start uh, focusing on uh, some of the more advanced features of this, like setting up different quadrants here for doors or drawers and letting the user decide. All right, so there we go. Let's move on.